Greetings, it's the 23rd of September 2019. Um, just like to this um, uh, discussion, this talk, this outreach, this video, audio presentation is a it's on the back of hearing a comment about um, homosexuals. Um, seeking understanding for their nature and seeking a change, seeking um, understanding and help and many people have turned to uh, Christian ministries uh, seeking understanding and uh, a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of life and a change of nature and I was watching um, Victoria, I think it was Victoria, I can't remember the name. It's a daytime TV program, Victoria Derbyshire, I think it's called. And it's a political news show on uh, weekday mornings. And there's um, a guest who was a homosexual man, a gay man, and he been to a Christian ministry um, offering assistance to help them become straight, to help their gayness not be gay anymore, to be um, quote unquote normal as naturally um, in a perfect world God has intended, you know, uh, right is right, wrong is wrong, but we live in a a sinful fallen world none of us are right none of us are perfect we're all sinners um, compared to Jesus Christ we are exposed we are um, rotten we are rotten lumps of clay to the cure to the core and we sin uh, all, all, all flesh is sinful only um, God is holy only God is righteous only God is just and merciful and only can any any sinner have a change through the power and love and holiness of Jesus Christ and that is through faith in him alone and what concerned me the comment that this uh, this man said this gentleman said he said complaining against this ministry and I thought well hang on a minute are you attacking the ministry have you misunderstood it or is is it is it one of the Christian ministries that's teaching error or it's a fake Christian ministry to cause division and um, and then attack the gospel of Jesus Christ with oh look at these they really don't know what they're doing so I thought I'd um, give the Christian ministry the benefit of the doubt but this gentleman's comment which I think is a true comment he said I am what I am I'm born what I am I was born what I am and I think that is absolutely a true saying that's an honest saying you are born in sin and you inherit sin sin is disobedience and from the original sin um, you may not believe the Bible you may not believe in God but if you don't believe in the truth you're not going to be looking for truth you'll you'll only be looking to undo the truth and you'll be looking to reinforce your error now personally I believed and I received and I know and I studied and I measured so therefore I continue to believe because I know that the word of God is true I don't understand fully the whole word of God I just believe that the word of God is inerrant, it's God's word, it's God's righteousness, it's infallible. It's not up for debate, it's not up for correction, it's up for teach, it's, it's, it teaches, it's uh, complete, it's standard, it, it is of God and it teaches what is not of God and what is of nature, what is of God's heart and what is in man's heart what is God's intention and what the devil's intention and because of the fall of mankind we're absent from the knowledge of God, the love of God 
and we sin, we inherit sin. Our children inherit sin, and sin continues. Sin is unbelief. Sin is pain, sin is misery, and sin is death. And the only way you can change sin is by holiness. And we, are, we cannot become holy from a sinful matter. We are created. God is uncreated. Jesus Christ is uncreated. He's a creator. He's the Father's word. And the Father created all things through his Son, for his Son. And he gave his Son, his Holy Son, who died on the cross for all sinners. He rose again the third day, put all sin, pain and misery off in hell. Because he's holy. And he conquered sin by suffering it for us. He suffered our sins, being innocent, holy, without spot. And, and God's beloved love, God's Son. God's love expressed in his Son. God's mercy. Because if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, God would wipe us out in an instant. He does not like any any injustice any any causing of pain causing others suffering he's a just holy merciful kind loving god but because of sin there's consequences and the only remedy for sin for corruption is something uh, uncorruptible incorrupt and that love and grace and that that spirit that man that God came in the flesh, in the Son of God. And through Jesus Christ, we can have a change of nature. We can have an imputed spirit within our corruptible natures. And the faithful promise of Jesus Christ is in the end of time, all incorruptible flesh will be resurrected. And through his grace, that... Um, that flesh will be uh, changed to uh, a sinless flesh, that it won't sin. But to um, receive that incorruptible resurrection uh, after this probate, mortal probation on earth, the believer must be born again. He must receive the grace and salvation dispensed. Jesus Christ is salvation. He died on the cross. And that is active for all sinful people, whether you're gay, whether you're the most righteous person that, you, that, that, that the world um, uh, highlights and holds up on the stage, uh, there is no holy man or woman living the earth except those who are faithful and live for Jesus Christ in the spirit. Who, who are still sinners, who uh, still need to confess their sins on a daily basis, um, all fall short of the glory of God and all need Jesus Christ. You need him once, forever, and then you need him daily. You need him moment to moment until the end, until it's over, until, this, um, until the Lord restores his power, his authority, his kingdom by allowing the probation to unfold and then uh, putting down all wickedness, all that's against God. But God is merciful and he allows agency, he allows sin, he allows men to choose. God's not a respecter of persons, he died to save all sinners and we're all sinners. This gentleman said, oh, that's the way I was born and um, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to look at these Christian ministries and see what they're teaching. And I couldn't catch the name of the ministry he saw, but I did I did look up some ministries. One of the ministries was um, a Christian man, uh, Dr. Mike Davison, and uh, I looked at the, his website, Core Issues. He's a doctor, he's a psychotherapist, and a Christian. I looked at the statement of faith he believes in, the infallible word of God. He believes in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So his statement of faith is, uh, wasn't complete, but it, it, was all, it was all singing the right things. Then I looked down to the uh, understanding their position of scripture, and they don't. And, and then, and then I just searched other ministries and see that oh, there's this division of teaching here, is, and I wondered. Well, well, 
well this is where all the confusion's coming from and then I looked at a list of mi ministries most of these ministries are bogus most of these ministries are false most of these ministries are, are, are divisive so they are the devil's behind them and somebody's propagated error to, court, to then point out the problem and that will attack the truth the word of God and the Christian faith and now whether this man is just um, using his free agency and his liberty as a Christian and um, teaching teaching what the word of God teaches in his therapy sessions but there was no there was no um, biblical teaching that the believer must be born again repentance is to um, the gospel is to repent and to believe in uh, Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins that's the gospel and um, there was no mention of that but there was offering of help and counseling now when I when I study the uh, scriptures and and I know the Word of God and I have a personal relationship with my my Heavenly Father with my Savior Jesus Christ and I've um, tasted his grace his love his his joy through the, the gift of the Holy Spirit and um, the Lord has led me in understanding of uh, flesh uh, the sins and the root, root, some of the roots of those sins and causes but I know that by my own strength I cannot change what I am but through faith and through daily belief I can be restored in a new creature which is promised the believer through the grace and merit of Jesus Christ that's what changes me it's putting off my nature and putting on a holy spiritual nature. I can fall down as any Christian who lives faithfully for the Lord Jesus Christ and receives that holy nature and walks in that, that truth, in that, in that spirit and in that nature afforded by the appropriation of the, the Lord's atonement on the cross that salvation dispense, once that received, that is um, imputed, given as a gift, a free gift, inside the believer's corrupt nature. So they have a warring nature against God's holy nature. And that is apparent on a daily basis. Um, all, all, all Christians have to uh, confess their sins, they have to forsake that nature, they have to put off that, that um, moment to moment, hour to hour, day to day, and put their trust in Jesus Christ. That is no easy feat, and that is not that is not by by your own efforts. Um, we are infallible, and we put we make mistakes. We put our foot wrong, but we have a merciful God. And he's granted us that that spirit. What he's done for us at the be, uh, on the cross is given us. It's given the believer at the beginning. It's imputed, and it remains faithful. But while the believer lives day to day, they can fluctuate in what they've received. But God is faithful and has promised to complete what He started in a believer's life as soon as they put their trust in Him and they appropriate. His grace and atonement on the cross and that's received in that believer's life and nothing can remove that nothing can interfere with that and I wondered well why aren't these uh, Christian ministries uh, teaching this and they're teaching that they are the advocates for the believer they are the advocates they, their therapy is going to change that um, corrupt nature and I think that's silly um, homosexuals a lie that's not that's holding back the power and love of Jesus Christ and so to uh, homosexuals I'm not going to stand here and uh, um, say it's right it's not right it's wrong it's corrupt and um, most of these um, gay rallies 
most of these sponsors are by sodomite powerful organisations who uh, sponsor homosexuals to parade, to uh, politically hear their voice, to show their discontent, that cry for equal rights. These are political machinations and wins behind these movements. I've heard uh, homosexual um, advocates complaining about all these new gay rallies in, in New York and how they've been overtaken by sponsors and um, raising up another ge generation, taking all that hard work that they've been um, rallying for and uh, petitioning for, uh, you know, to get their rights and then someone comes along with money and sponsors a completely new movement and leaves these people on the sidelines, they're not included in the rallies. It's, um, if, you, if you're honest and you're not wrapped up in your, yourself and your self-righteousness that, oh, you think that homosexuality is a lifestyle choice. Um, let me uh, remind you that it's wrong. It, the Holy Spirit will convict what is wrong. You don't need telling what's right and wrong. You can resist and be rebellious because I, I, I'm a man. I know. I'm rebellious. Um, I, I was a blasphemer. I, w I was a wicked, degenerate man. Although you look at my life, you thought, well, I didn't see you really done anything wrong. But you didn't know my heart. You didn't know what I was capable of. Whether I'd done those things is irrelevant. They, they, a lot of things were in my heart to do. And um, I only stopped myself doing them. I didn't stop what I was. It's only Jesus Christ that gave me a new heart, a new life, to have power over that nature. If I don't trust in Jesus, I will return to that nature. Just like a homosexual man, a, a lesbian woman, who sincerely seeks the Lord, seeks the truth, calls upon him, believes, trusts in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of sins, he will uh, save he will answer instantly and he will save that person where they are in their sinful state and he will give them a new life and from that day forward they will live in that new life and they will be able to put off their homosexual um, nature that's what they're born they're born in sin and sin is sin whether it's homosexual whatever. it's a corruption of the DNA and the whole human race is corrupt it's sinful and it will never unsinful itself because sinfulness can't change its nature. Splicing DNA is not going to cut it. Um, blacking out, murdering off, killing off this and that is not going to cut it. The only person who's redeemed the sinful, corrupt world is the sinless, holy, incorruptible Lord and God. And God sent his word, God sent his son, God sent his mercy and love and his outstretch to save all sinners. If you do not believe, you remain sinful, whether you're homosexual, whether you're a, a, a good charitable person, whether you go to church. If you've not received Jesus Christ and been born again, Jesus doesn't know you. You don't know Jesus' love. And God is loving, God is merciful, but if you remain outside that, through unbelief, you remain lost in corruption. You will go the way of the world. God will pour out a strong delusion. He's pouring out a strong delusion because people are believing lies. They believe in political machinations. They can't see the plain truth right in front of them. You see a double speak on the telly, you see contradiction, hypocrisy. Uh, this world is uh, in, in, in the fruits of, 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 of evil are um, just accumulating and mounting and it's uh, I only pray that uh, the Lord will intercede and help our nation help our government help help things be um, taught truly so I wanted to address these uh, ministries uh, Christian ministries and I looked up a whole list and um, they all roughly teach uh, that, that somebody intercedes now that may be right if 
um, they are teaching the, the truth about the Holy Scriptures. That there's only one mediator between God and man, that's the man. That's the Lord, that's Christ Jesus, that's Jesus Christ the Lord, the Saviour and uh, the Word of God. God in the, the fullness of uh, God in the flesh, the, God the Father, uh, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and Jesus came on behalf of God the Father, a representative, the, the Word of God, the Angel of God, the second member of the the Trinity, the Triune Godhead, and he he was sent to um, preach righteousness, to preach love, to preach truth. And he died, and the world, all sin, rejected him. And only those who realised their sin as and wanted 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 the truth believed and received it. Those who didn't want, remained in their sinful state, and that's why the world repeats itself. The the lessons of history are repeated continually because of the rejection of the word of God and the truth. And God is God's going to pour out His wrath, but with His Son, with His mercy, He's outstretched on a daily basis. And that's why God hasn't struck us all off and, and just you know pulled the plug. He doesn't desire any any man, any any woman to perish and miss out on their eternal salvation. Uh, the Lord has taught all his believers to love his enemies because uh, somebody who's received salvation knows that they're not worthy of receiving that salvation and they just desire that for every man, woman and child regardless of what their sins are. It's not us to judge what sin, what sin is right and what sin is not and God died to simply, he's not a respecter of persons, he died to save all sinners and we're all sinners and we all need saving. That's the simplicity of the gospel. You reject that, you're fighting against yourself, you're fighting against God. And you're never gonna you're not gonna get anywhere. The only way to know is to believe and receive and you do not need a Christian ministry to advocate for you. You need a Christian ministry to teach you the truth what Jesus Christ has advocated and interceding for you on your behalf and you need to trust in him over other people telling you oh this is the reason you're gay, that's the reason you're gay. The reason you're a homosexual is because you, you, you've inherited sin and you've chosen to uh, allow and follow and justify that sinful nature just like paedophiles, just like burglars, just like thieves and liars and murderers they all choose to remain like that because they don't choose to change. They don't repent. And if you if you if you go to sleep unrepentant, the next day you're going to wake up. It may be a new day. You might have forgotten about all your sin, but you wake up that same person with that same heart, that same unrepentant soul and spirit, and you you will carry on in in error. So you, you may justify your sin and say it's all right, but you're rebelling against the truth and you're hardening yourself in your sin and you're lost. You've cut yourself off from the truth and the remedy and you'll just become hard. You'll be mocked up by world powers and you'll be, you'll be spent in the uh, fanfare and delusion and merchandising the souls and the destroying of, of lives. A lot of these ministries are Freemasonic, um, uh, Jesuit or they're, in, they're inspired by evil to um, if you understand Freemasonry, the secret societies, they're antichrist, they're simply to set up false Christian um, ministries and then teach error and then point out the error as though that they're the authority and what's right and wrong. Um, I looked at a Christian, uh, no it's not a Christian site, it's a secular site about the um, trying to un intellectually understand uh, Christian ministries, but I could see straight away that it was divisive because it puts Christians into two camps, um, one extreme on the right, and then they put conservative and liberal. I've actually filmed it, but I, I didn't put the sound on because of my my uh, computer is very loud, so uh, it's just distracting, and people don't like. Um, you know, the distracting noise, it's people get all picky out of quality. I just want to provide the truth 
and I don't care if there's noise in the background, but I do try and consider other people's, you know, listening. Um, I don't do these to, um, for entertainment, I do these seriously because of people's lives, people's souls, and pe homosexuals suffer, they're sinners, they need saving. Um, you can hate me, you can call me a homophobe, uh, I, I call you a Christophobe, I call you a truthophobe, I call you a liar, I call you deceived, you know, but what, what is accusations going to do? Why reject the truth for yourself? Why don't you seek that out, receive it and know? And you don't need me to tell you, you don't need Christians to tell you. What you need is the Word of God to teach you. You need the Lord. You need the reality of His forgiveness and mercy and love. And these Christian ministries are conspired and then people will be there to point out, oh look at the error of Christianity, what a load of mumbo jumbo, what a load of division in it. Well, there's division in all things, but the Word of God is the believer's final authority. It's not what Christians teach, it's what the Word of God teaches. And, and, the, and the faithful who've received the Word of God will teach what the Word of God is where it's faithful, although although we make mistakes, but the Word of God is to correct us in our mistakes. And if you stop being corrected, you, you become hardened in your error. So you need to always be corrected. That's what the Word of God's for. It's a standard. It's an infallible standard. It, it's, if there's more than one standard, then the, the truth becomes subjective, and then there'll be versions of that standard. But God is faithful, He's, there's only one God, so there's only one word, there's only one saviour, that's God, that was Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, God's son in the flesh, God's gift, God's offering, and he offered himself for the glory and mercy of God, salvation, love. And that was rejected, so he, there's one, one God, one truth, one way, one standard, one faith. There's only one truth, there's only one faith to receive that truth, and that's in the Lord Jesus Christ and the King James uh, Holy Bible, the, the AV, the authorised version, authorised by God and authorised by uh, the law. Um, lawfully um, interpreted, um, translated from the original text and preserved lawfully and given as a free gift to the public to teach them what God's standard is against all error, against all falseness and that is a free gift for all believers the word, the testimony of the word the precious holy blood of the Lord Jesus Christ redeeming sin and, and granting that uh, life within the believer within the faithful believer, those who believe through faith not by trying to change themselves, not through counselling, not good, not by uh, the intellectual understanding of uh, sciences, but by the grace and power of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's what changes your nature. But you, you receive Jesus Christ, you will still have that corrupt nature. That doesn't justify you being homosexual. You are, you are a sinner who's now received forgiveness and a new life and a new heart and a new mind and you live in that new heart, that new mind, you're renewed in that daily and you will be able to put off your old nature simply like that. Now that's not easy to comprehend if you're not a believer because you'll intellectualise it. The Bible's for believers, it's not for unbelievers. You need to receive the gift of God and then you will then you will understand the same spirit in the Bible that's been given into you and you you will be uh, changed and you will live a new life but you will still have your old corrupt nature you can still give up your new life and return to your old nature but you wouldn't want to because you've tasted the contrast between the mercy forgiveness the grace the completeness the wholeness promised to come in the flesh and whole in the spirit. You're, you're made complete by that holiness, by that love, by that gift of Jesus Christ, our beloved Lord. 
and he is outstretched to all homosexuals, all sinners. It's not, a, it's not just about homosexuals' rights, it's about everybody's rights. Everybody's got rights. Um, a burglar's got rights to go out and break the law and burgle. The law has the right to go and put that burglar in prison to stop him offending people. You know, so, you know, the world's unjust. Um, what about my rights? Um, I'm traumatised. Uh, look, lies, any lie, will open up my trauma. Where's my right to stop all me walking down the street and seeing all advertising? I haven't got any rights. Where's my rights to be a, um, share a, uh, the gospel? Uh, because uh, it's dominated by liars. The world is uh, corrupt. And, and, and the truth will be attacked. So where's my lawful right to protect me sharing the gospel truly? When I'm up, when when Christians are up against falseness at every at every turn, and nobody, um, everything's against the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it's cloaked in the name of Christianity. Now, this site I put up, it's called Religious Tolerance, and I put it, I'll put it on the end of the video. And you can see what, it, and I've also put a video of uh, Donald Trump, somebody put up a video of some amusing facts about Donald Trump. Not quite, they're not really amusing, but they're, you, you can see the, you know, the, you can just see it for what it is, the irony, I can't even say that word. Irony in the, um, in the meeting and the if you look at history and the divisions the and if you read the scriptures your the Lord has pointed out all or what's in man's heart and what will take how that will develop, how that will unfold in, in, in the world and how that's manifest through uh, the world's actions, mankind's actions. And the video I've shown is um, Donald Trump presenting uh, the Pope with a gift, some Martin Luther letters, and the Pope's presented him with a, a bronze plaque or a brass plaque that's made by a, a, a Roman Catholic artist. And it's an olive tree with two branches, and down the middle of the tree is a big black um, omission of any material, it's just a crack. And the Pope says, this is the division of war, and these two olive branches are the representation of peace. And now he didn't explain the paradigm between the left side, left branch and the right branch, what that meant. But if you know anything about um, esoteric um, hidden meanings and uh, the dualistic occult teachings of uh, the Babylonian or pagan world, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll see the um, imagery in his uh, in his presentation, and that's all right through these um, elevatory crafts, these priest crafts, these like Freemasonry, like the Illuminati, like the Jesuits, these man-made clergy organisations behind all the machinations to set up false, false Christian um, bodies and attack it, and uh, cloak in the name of Christianity, the dominance of Christianity, and destroy all the truth, the real Christians, and uh, so they take the dominant ground and persecute, persecute that which is telling the truth, and, and undermine the gospel of Jesus Christ, undermine the authority of the King James Holy Bible, that it's a believer's final authority, they don't need anyone, any, any intellectual to tell them what the scripture means, they have the completeness, they've received the fullness of God, they may not understand the fullness, but by grace they've given it and therefore they're totally equipped to study the Bible, grow in the Bible and be taught and edified by the Lord of God and the grace of God, by the Holy Word and the Spirit in the Word of God, which is God's grace, which is God's Spirit, which is written of God, it's authored from heaven, it wasn't written by men to deceive people, to fear them into, oh you're going to hell if you don't join our church, no, God is simply holy, if you sin, the consequences of sin are death. Death is, is the separation from life. Life is life. There's no, uh, there's nothing else. And if you, and, and if you're a sinner, you will die. And if you die in your sin, you're stuck in your sin. Jesus Christ died to deliver all from entering into death.
and not being able to get out. He has the keys to hell and death. He passed through it. He put off all sins and that became hell in the grave. And he, res he came out of the grave with the righteous and left the wicked there in hell, in sin. So if you die in your sin, you've knowingly, willfully rejected God and you'll die and you'll perish and you will be resurrected. And you will not be able to, when, when you're judged in, the, in front of God and he asks you, why didn't you believe? Why have you remained a sinner? You'll have no excuse. And it'll be just for God. You'll be convicted and you won't be able to say, look God, I'm, I'm righteous. You will know you had your chance. And you, you've lost. You've lost your life. So if you find your life and you find your purpose in this world and you, you've rejected Jesus Christ, the life, you'll lose your life. If you give, forsake your life, you forsake the world, forsake your sin and seek and believe and receive life, receive forgiveness of sins, you will have attained your life because you've lost your life and received eternal life. If you reject eternal life and then seek some other way, you're lost, you're on the broad path and the broad path leads to destruction. It's in the Gospel of Matthew, in Matthew 7. You know, straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. A few that be there that find it. A few, why? Why a few? Because only a few would believe in the simplicity. It's only a few that will that realise that they're sinful and they need help. And they need a sinless God to help them overcome their wicked sins that they know that they are born with and they're stuck with and no matter what they do, they can't change them. And they, they go to this doctor and that doctor and they get one answer there and one answer there. And there's never never really any satisfaction to meet the need. It's either a half-baked measure. There's only one full measure. There's only one remedy for our sin. There's only one remedy for the world's problems. And he is on the right hand of God. He is Jesus Christ and salvation. And all these uh, ministries are divisive. They are against Christianity and, and they, they appear in the name of Christianity and it was to put off people from receiving the truth simply which will set them free it will set them free from sin lies trusting in what other people intellectuals think and it will give them a, um, a testimony a report a witness of, of the Lord if they appropriate put their faith in, in the Lord to receive him and then they won't need any man to teach them. They, they would be able to measure all truth for themselves. And they would be able to understand, well, who's teaching the truth and who's teaching error. And um, that's a free gift for all. And I examined these, um, this uh, site called Religious Tolerance. And I, what was apparent is that all the expert opinion is, has not provided what the answer is they are just created a, a left and right paradigm and they tap both and say oh look how uh, religious tolerance is uh, how how christianity is uh, divided and how it's not revealing uh, the truth but they don't but the author of the site didn't give the remedy it just gave her an opinion of the division in the expert world in the medical world or the oh it's this it's that it's uh, you got all these theories on what, what causes homosexuality. And then you've got these divisions, in, and that's taken forward into non-believing Christians who, who claim to be Christians but haven't may ne not necessarily have appropriated the atonement and received Jesus. They just think that they have. Or they've received Jesus and they've fallen from grace and gone back to the works, works of the law. And they're teaching, oh, we can advocate, we can change, we can be the ones with the counselling and all the, all the knowledge, and we can rob the saviour of his role. And that's what I believe these ministries are doing. They're not, they're deceiving. They're not, they're not teaching the truth. They're holding the truth behind their back and interceding as the saviour, the little saviours for thinking that they can advocate for people's uh, salvation. Now I'm not. I know I understand people have liberty, and they can go to um, counsellors, they can go to psychiatrists, and uh, but my argument is, well, why don't you go to the Lord Jesus Christ? Why don't you go to Heavenly Father? Why don't you seek the Living God? And then 
he will direct you uh, where you can go and who, what, what they say, what parts of what they say you can trust and what parts you can say, well, I disagree, I don't think that's wrong. But if you put all your trust in the flesh, in a man's opinion, you're going to get a diverse um, um, variation of opinions. It's this, it's that. I oh, don't believe them. They, they think they're there. And you'll, you'd have, you'll be dependent to put your trust in something if you're seeking an answer that you can't provide for yourself. So you're naturally going to put your trust in someone who you believe thinks that they know what you're doing. You could go through a hundred people trying all these different remedies for your homosexuality and never really get anywhere. But that just end up more confused. And this guy said, that's what I'm, that's who I am. And I, and I thought, well that's never, I've never heard such a true saying, yeah, you are. You're born that way, and um, sin is a corrupting of nature. I'm gonna read a scripture from Romans 1, uh, the book of Romans, which is to the, the believing R Roman saints who received the uh, testimony of Jesus Christ and the new covenant of the finishing of the old covenant to the Jews and the renewing of that covenant because uh, the, the people of uh, Israel rejected their Messiah and they were cut off from their covenant and it was renewed for both Jew and Gentile alike so the, 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 the Lord's heart and law and way given to the Jews first then, then through Jesus Christ was given to offered to the Jews and then opened up the door to the rest of the world, the Gentiles, the non-Jew. So all Jews, all Gentiles, all, all the whole world, if you read John chapter 3, the whole world is under condemnation for not believing in Jesus, for not receiving God's word, for not trusting in God who is, who's holy, who's not going to roll over. Um, unbelief doesn't make God go away. Unbelief doesn't make the truth not true. It just um, convicts the untruthness in it by the truth for remaining in its sin. Because anyone who's received the uh, forgiveness of sins know that God is true and faithful and that he's going to outpour his wrath upon this wicked world. And we've got wars stewing. We've got the great tribulation brewing. We, don't, we have prophecy. Prophecy is the heart and love of God explaining us how the world, how this body of nature through time is going to unfold and how it's going to repeat, how it's going to become corrupt and how the forces of the world are going to dominate and bring in this globalistic one world power to, to capture all under its own captivity. It enslaves people, it makes merchandise of people and to do that it's got to create this false dialect of war and then it's got to come up with a remedy of peace. You can see it all in today's politics, you can see it throughout history. This Hellegian dialect, this problem, reaction, solution, create war, come up with a peace. Except you don't do that openly, you do that divisively by sponsoring people, encouraging people, planting seeds, lies, political machinations and then fermenting these problems. And then the people who ferment it are hidden in the, in, in the background and then they provide the answer. And this is all right through the history of the Roman Catholic Church, the world corporate conspiring nature of mankind in the world, in mammon, in greed, in lust, in focusing on the flesh, focusing on the pride of life, focusing on wealth and power. And having it, having it, having one over on people, this is the flesh, and the remedy for all man's kind ills, all man's injustices, has been uh, given. It's freely on offer on the cross. It's not going to make the world perfect overnight, because we remain. God is uh, faithful to allow, allow sin, men to have free choice if people want to be homosexual. God's going to allow them to become homosexual and he's given them over because they've chosen to be given over and they will become how they live and they will become perverse, they will become bitter and they won't be happy, they won't be fulfilled and it will, it will ferment, it will go on and it will drag more generations into the lie, into the deception and into the corruption and all these things, homosexuality, all areas and problems 
people will just get insurmountably uncontrollable and it will force the world into this into turmoil and then from that turmoil comes up tight measures um, another bad remedy for the problem another false remedy for the problem of the world's problems and on it goes and that will lead edges forward to the great tribulation God's outpouring of wrath he's going to remove the faithful he's going to remove those who've believed so if you're a homosexual homosexual man homosexual woman um, you, you're at first you're a sinner regardless of your sexuality you're a sinner and you need saving from your sin homosexuality is a wicked sin it's um, it, it's born from sodomy it's born from a base aggressive beast bestiality it's dominating it's, uh, there's a dual nature to uh, homosexuality and it's a mimic of that which is whole that which is wholesome, a man and a wife, a woman to, to is um, naturally able to bear children, it's a mother that's got the nurturing femininity, the, the qualities of a woman's nature, and then it's a man's nature. And that has become corrupt and perverse through sin, and generationally sin is inherited. And, it, and, it, and in it, if you're born in a sinful environment, that environment will nourish that sin and it becomes more sinfulness. So if you have children in that environment, the sin increases and this is exactly what God has said. Through unbelief, sin is cultivated in the human DNA. And if you, if you really honestly study all the sciences, all the psychology and correctly and measure it with the standard of, of truth and, and, and um, evaluating all the uh, points and measuring it against the standard of truth, against the holy word of God, against the testimony. But if you don't believe in that standard, you're, you're not going to have a standard to measure what is true. It's all down to subjective intellectual opinion and that, that's division. There is no division in the word of God. The division is in sinfulness. It's in either um, not understanding, uh, having a lack, or, or choosing to um, be wrong by not doing that which is right, which will lead you into error, which will lead you into transgression, which is sin, which is not right. So with the standard of truth, you can test all these sciences, uh, genetics, inheritance of um, good things and bad things, and then the environment. And, uh, you can get into the argument of all, all all the sciences, but when you when you look at it, uh, a lot of a lot of sciences are corrupt and uh, participating in the occult, and um, they have the uh, mystical beliefs, and uh, all, all all intellectual opinion is uh, that ha doesn't acknowledge the the truth that God is. And he's a standard of all truth, and he's revealed all that is sinful and of this of this world and of the flesh, and the root of that sin. If that's rejected, because that's true, and if you reject the truth, you're not going to have a standard to measure all sciences, all opinions, and all all these things to evaluate well what's justly true and what's um, bias, which is not true, which isn't straight, bent, and it's crooked and it's corrupt. We read um, what, the holy, what the Holy God has taught through His Word, through His Holy Spirit, and it's preserved in the Scriptures. And this is uh, written by um, the Holy Spirit, by through the grace and merit of God, through the operation of Jesus Christ, um, orchestrating the um, leading of um, the Apostle Paul, and he's he was uh, fully against. Jesus Christ, he was rebelling against the church, he was holding coats, he had a license to persecute the saints, incarcerate them, torture them, punish them for going against the, uh, the, the Jewish law, the law of Moses. And he realised that he was sinful and he received the grace and forgiveness of God. He saw personally Jesus Christ and he was uh, given that complete love and fullness in his heart and he realised that his nature and the law was warring against 
that power and love that you just received through faith by trusting in the love and mercy of Jesus Christ. And then he's converted. And I'm, and I'm taking you to uh, the book of Romans, and this is this man receiving Jesus Christ, and now he's sharing it with all the Gentile and Jewish believers in Rome, predominantly uh, Gentiles, more than likely mostly uh, or completely all Gentiles in fact but I don't know I wasn't there so there may have been uh, Jewish uh, believers in Rome but maybe they would have uh, moved but nevertheless it's the um, Apostle which is a faithful witness of the personally seeing the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ and dying as a, as a, to, to seal your testimony that's what a testament is it's a, it's a somebody's faithful life witness and, and and the spilling of their blood. That's a testament. That's it has to be sealed in blood. Uh, all the apostles are testators of the testament, the holy precious blood being spilled by God, by God's Son. The testament, the, the covenant, the contract between uh, man and God. That was the um, promise given to uh, Abraham. Isaac and Jacob and Moses and all the, all the, all the seed of Israel to come the, cut, the new, new and everlasting covenant but they rejected it so the, that opened the door to the whole world and uh, Jew and Gentile and that was uh, received by Paul and taught and he's given a, a revealing the because uh, he had the contrast of, uh, of holy nature he could understand through his life experience or um, a good part of his own nature and the world's nature and having the f holy spirit and understanding the god he revealed all that's against jesus christ and and why and it gave us an understanding and start with romans one so paul is sharing to the believers it's not it's not to um, unbelievers, it's to people who are seeking the Word of God for understanding, edification, to grow in that which they've received. So Paul is commissioned to, um, given the fullness, and he, he's, he's sharing it now amongst the body of believers who've gathered and come and receive the uh, testimony and faithfulness of the the grace of God, the gift of Jesus Christ, and they've uh, been born again. And they've been born of this God's Spirit. And the, the, the book of Romans is uh, talking to those believers at that time who were from Rome and they've believed in Jesus Christ. So they are the Roman saints. Saints simply means faithful believer. Um, somebody who believes in a God whether that's in the Old Testament or New Testament, they are a saint. They're not somebody who's been elevated and put on a pedestal for all their good political works and all, all, all their evil or whatever, or whatever they've been put on a pedestal to be uh, like the Catholic Church uh, ordained saints. Well, saint is simply a title of um, a child of God, a believer. And um, a saint can, you know, can sin and make a mistake, they're still a saint because uh, uh, they've received uh, Jesus' forgiveness and mercy. It doesn't justify their sin, but it um, exonerates them from all sin because they've been forgiven um, by the grace of God, and they are a saint. So the book of Romans is to the church, and it's speaking about why um, flesh and uh, you know, the evolving of um, inheritance in our in our families in, in in the human race and in our own family lines how we inherit sin how we inherit good things and we inherit bad things uh, the whole whole world's under condemnation in sin the whole world is a sinful lump and it remains in sin and that sin grows there's also any good that's done can also increase within the human lump but any any corruption in any goodness is corrupt so like the prophet um, Isaiah said, our righteousness is as filthy rags. We're like oily stained sheets. Our goodness is stained by our sinfulness. We can't remove our sin. Only Jesus Christ can remove our sin. And um, Paul's revealing by the power of grace of Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit, through his love, 
he's revealing that which is against it, the natural man, the natural flesh, the sinful flesh. And we'll start in um, verse 16, this is Paul speaking. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek, that's non-Jew, Gentile. That's the context of what Paul's speaking about. Uh, Jew and Greek is just uh, a way of saying a non-Jew, because uh, the, the, the rest of the world were predominantly Greek. So they'd have been called Greeks, so Jew and Greek. So what, he's referring to Jew and non-Jew alike, all, all, all that aren't Jews and all that are Jews. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. So if you believe, the, the love of God is manifest in you. If you don't believe, the flesh is manifest in you. And this is what uh, the Holy Spirit's revealing. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So the whole world can see the glory of God, the works of God, the hands of God, and the the un understanding by the things in the world of God's power and his nature, his Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, three in one, one in three, the one in the middle died for me, he's my Saviour and God. This is the Godhead, Jesus come in the fullness of the Godhead fully. To die for the sins of the world and this is what Paul's revealing so that they are without excuse so the whole world knows can see the glory of God can see creation has the word of God has the testimony of the truth as a contrast to that which is untrue all those who receive the truth and believe it grow in the truth they've received the truth and they, they grow in understanding of the truth and what is true what is error because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. So we've got the whole world rejecting God, having all the goodies, having the knowledge from the Word of God, using it to their own ends, their own glory, but denying where who the author and finisher of life is, where who the author and finisher of all good things are, all things that are true, all things that are right. They deny God, and 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 then they become vain, foolish and darkened. They turn away from the author and they're ungrafted from the vine and they lose, They've, the whole world is lost outside of that, born outside of that, lost. So it becomes corrupt in its nature. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. So all the world coming up, well, we know what the answer is. It's this today, it's that today. Oh no, it's not that anymore, it's this. And it's always changing. And, and there's always a new people coming up with the claiming to know the way. Oh, we know the way, this is what we need to do. And one after the other, it's a, a, a repeat, repeating that error, repeated over and over again. And change the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man. And, the, uh, and, and, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonour their own bodies between themselves. He changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. So uh, men um, aspire to, be, to other intellectual opinion, other men, they uh, deny God and glorify themselves and the works of their hands and they, uh, God's given them up because they've given God up so God cannot intercede, God cannot help. They turn their back, deny God in his face and then they um, claim to be wise but to God they, they become fools. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, through their own choices, through their own beliefs in their hearts. God's given them up. So I'll read that again. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, um, reprobates, through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonour their own bodies 
between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women, women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in the lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, <coughs> and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malign malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, 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 unmerciful, who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. Now you may say, oh, um, you may justify your homosexuality, you may be angry, right, but what you're, you're actually doing is you're, you're rejecting the love, forgiveness of God and the change that you need. Reject that and you become one of these things, you, you turn in on yourself, your, own, your, your nature has nowhere to go, it's going to just become more corrupt. You may say, well I'm not a backbiter, I don't hate, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not proud, despiteful, boaster, uh, disobedient to my parents, without understanding, Na without natural affection. What do you mean, how can I be about natural affection uh, if, I, if you're homosexual and you claim to be loving? Well, you, what you don't understand is um, if you're a body of unbelief and you may not necessarily fire the gun, but if you saw somebody in that body fire a gun at someone speaking out against your homosexuality for no other reason than saying, I believe you're wrong, I don't hate you, I don't wish you any harm, I'm just telling you the truth that you need to repent, you're corrupt, I believe, and God's word is true. And that person got angry. How dare you offend all my Christian, all my uh, homosexual brethren, all the community? And you're shot, right? Would would if you were on the sidelines, think that oh, serves you right? You know that's that's what it's saying. It's saying your nature, your heart, is become a reprobate. You're reprobating your heart, saying that it's just to corrupt nature, it's, got, it's just to go against God's plan, it's just to say that I'm right over the word of God, over the truth, and so God has given you over. So if mankind chooses to um, hold up homosexuality as it's a legal right, like all these politicians, um, I saw um, President Boris Johnson um, condemning these Christian ministries saying that uh, you know, um, pe these gay people can't help it, it's the way they're born and it's persecution. Well, it's political correctness gone insane. Uh, these politicians won't speak out against the truth. They're compromised by these evil powers. They don't believe the gospel. They don't believe Jesus Christ. They, be they, they, they are representing their, themselves. They are representing what they believe is God, what is right, that doesn't make it right, it just, it, it, it's, 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 we live in a lost world, but we are commanded to pray for all people's souls, pray for the world, pray for our leaders, pray for our government, not to um, attack them, not to assassinate them, or assault them, or corrupt, or make mischief, we're, we're to pray, we're to remain impartial, we're passing through. Um, but we can say that they're wrong, that they're sinners and they need rep to repent and believe like everybody else. But, but God has ordained these powers to, to lawfully um, govern and, and to keep uh, the law in order to keep, uh, you know, it's every, every nation's right to have a law to protect that which is, it has a responsibility. But the whole world is corrupt and sinful, and we live in a fallen world. 
And as long as the world remains in in sin, we're going to have these corrupt powers. We're going to have this. We're going to have corruption in all, in our law, in our government, in our hearts, in our lives. But that doesn't make the law wrong. Doesn't make um, it doesn't make it right to to rebel. Doesn't make it right because we think it's right. Only God is right. Only God is holy, and only God is just. And His Word is clearly taught that. Um, all flesh has fallen short of the glory of God, that none, no flesh will be justified in God's presence. Only the Lord Jesus Christ is justified. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can justify a sinner and forgive them of their sins and give them a new change, a new heart. That's what will change your, your vile nature. That's what changed my vile nature. That's what's given me an alternative to my vile nature, which vile nature in the resurrection will be removed, because my my flesh will pass away, but the life within me is eternal. Jesus Christ is eternal life. He forgives all sinners, and um, so I invite people to check out the um, religious tolerance site to consider the diversions and the machinations, to study history, to study carefully, to not listen to the popular um, dominance of all these um, intellectual opinion on this and on that, and, and whether that's on Christianity, whether that's on science, whether that's on politics, all, all, of, all of any soul needs is first the knowledge of God the love of God and, and love passes all understanding and uh, knowledge knowledge can be um, dangerous, knowledge can make you sharp and puffed up you can go half baked with a little bit of knowledge you need the knowledge of the love of God and you need the knowledge that uh, all flesh is sinful and all, all, that's, all that corrupt flesh needs redeeming to live in God's presence and God is merciful and desires all flesh to live in this kingdom. To receive that kingdom in your heart, you simply believe the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll, you have a promise in his eternal kingdom to come with Christ from heaven to uh, restore this earth back to its rightful, sovereign creator and God. And that's the Father, his beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And they will rule in the millennium, after the great tribulation, the outpouring of wrath, the coming of the Antichrist, and the restoring of Israel, back to their, back to their promise, their promised kingdom to come, which is in Christ, which has come, which is and which will come with Christ. He's the King. He's the Author. He's the Finisher. He's the God of this world. He's Sovereign. He's Creator. He's outstretched to all sinners. And I don't wish to hurt any uh, homosexual for being what they are, you are no different to me, you're a sinner. You need forgiveness, you need saving. Whether you understand homosexuality fully, I don't. All I understand is sin, my nature, and how my is inherited and it would pass on to my children. No matter how hard I tried not to be a sinner and not to... Um, Give that to my children that they'd go, you know, don't do this, don't do that. I, yeah, but knowing it's in their nature, knowing that they're going to inherit it from my inheritance, from my father, from his father. You cannot deny the science of genetics. You can uh, listen to full science, and science has got a lot of money behind it to say it's true, and it's in fact not true. And I can give you so many um, examples in, 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 in the world today where you've got lying science propping up and legitimising something that's illegal and not right, not lawful, immoral, but it's given legitimacy because uh, some professionals said it's alright. They've done this throughout history. Evil men, men will always be evil. No matter what good you do in this world, they'll always be evil to overthrow it so it can dominate. You know, that's just sinful nature. And we're all sinful and we, we all need saving, and that's my outreach and testimony. I'm going to close there with, with the hope that this has reached someone sincerely looking to um, 
be forgiven of sins, to know the living God, and to understand their own homosexuality, and to seek what God desires for all mankind to experience in their life. Now, whether they receive that in this life, I, I cannot say. But um, Jesus Christ has promised us an eternal life, a perfect, just, holy life where it's God is sovereign, God is just, and, and God's in charge. But God's given us our free agency and our probation to come to that knowledge by ourselves without any interference. And he's, me he's, he's the only mediator, he's the only advocate that any sinful person needs to receive that that love and knowledge of God and I'll close it in the beloved holy precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.